Hey everybody, <clears throat> got a package it's from the Football League, and it's the Manager of the Year trophy. They haven't emailed me about it, but I mean, after the season we had, right, we gotta be a shoe in Hmm. Better luck next year. Hello everybody, welcome to Devotion to Promotion, and no, I'm not bitter at all about not getting the Manager of the Year award. We'll talk more about that later. But welcome to our year-end wrap-up episode where we take, take kind of a 15 minutes or so to look back on the season and then speculate a little bit about what the future holds for us. And if you are new to the series, we just, we've just we been managing Nuneaton Borough for five seasons. We just earned promotion to the Championship League for next season. So things are getting real for us in the next couple of months. But let's take a little bit of a look back on how the season ended up. We had just clinched second place in our last episode. We had two matches after that. We did win them. So we ended up... Uh, ending up behind Charlton by 12, 11 points in total. And then we had uh, a 10-point gap between us and Colchester, uh, who were right behind us in third place. And also, interestingly enough, uh, Southend was right in our tail until the last month of the season. They also were the team that earned promotion. They kind of did what we did last year, which was to nibble around the automatic promotion spot, then tail off badly at the end of the year, and then recover in the playoffs to earn promotion. So they got promoted with us to Skybet League 1 last year, and now they're getting promoted with us to the Championship League this year. So we will see them next year, which is good because we beat them, I think, two out of three times this year. So maybe there'll be one team we can beat next year. That could be a very valuable six points for us as things are looking right now. Uh, so just in terms of, yeah, we won't look at the final results. They're probably not all, that, not all that interesting. Our player of the year, our team player of the year, if we take a look at that. We've had some of the team awards. And I unfortunately, I already deleted that email. But our team player of the year was Tom Holmes, who ended up our star center back. Seven goals and 32 appearances. 7.34 rating, and I'm very happy to say he's back next year at a super cheap 1,700 pounds per week. So that's uh, that, I think that's good for us to have him back, and, and he was a fantastic player in that regard. Also, for the first time in five seasons, we had a player make the team of the year. So Dan Dickens, interestingly enough, he was our left back. And he was on loan from, where was it? Was it Leeds, I think, maybe? Take a, I should actually should know this, shouldn't I? Uh, the contract info uh, from Bournemouth. He's on loan from us from Bournemouth, and we have extended his contract out for another year, so he'll be with us for another year as well. He was on Team of the Year, kind of very steady performer. He didn't really, didn't really stand out all that much, but um, you know, had just a great rating, 33 appearances, four assists, two goals from left back, one player of the match, So, but just really solid defensively. So it was good to see that happen because we've never had that before. And then we did not get uh, Manager of the Year award. <clears throat> if we take a look at the awards here, let's go up in here. Award winners, Milosevic, who was the Charlton manager, got manager of the year. But it's interesting here because let's take a little bit of a look. There's some interesting kind of team stats here. They obviously finished. Here is, by the way, uh, our salary per year. So Charlton got first place with 10.81 million. We got the second spot with the lowest salary in the lead, 1.6 million. But they gave the team the manager of the year award to him, I think. Our pet dog could have led that team to a championship. But I'm not bitter at all. Not at all. Um, anyway, we'll see them next year. And hopefully we can do better than we did this year. Because we did lose to them three times. But yeah, their salary was seven times greater than ours. We did have the lowest salary in the league by about 300,000, 400,000 pounds there. So, uh, you know, I thinking back the other day, I probably played, I'm trying to think how many seasons of football manager I've probably played in my life. And it's Probably been about 50. I've kind of missed some years and, you know, life and kids and stuff like that. But uh, when I do play, it's probably about four or five seasons on average. And I've probably played, you know, maybe 10 of the versions over the past 20 years or something like that. And I think this was the best season I've ever had. I was trying to think of I've ever felt like I've done better with less. And I'm pretty sure... I haven't done that. And in thinking about it, we got really lucky because every offseason, you pick up a number of players, right? You're going to have some loans. You're going to have some signings and stuff like that. And it's not unusual like half of those don't pan out. But except for one player, every single player we picked up in this offseason had a good year and was able to contribute to our squad. So all of our loan players, except for this guy, Terrell Pennant, who just got hurt all the time. I mean, he looks like a good player, but he just was constantly hurt. Even when he was out there, he just didn't play all that well. 
Other than that, though, all of our signings just worked out really well for us. So I felt like we got a lot of kind of uh, the gods shine down, shine down on us, except there for the end when they decided to hurt our best players for a while. But by then, things had already kind of been settled into place. So I feel like looking back on it, I don't think I've ever had a season where I've felt like things have gone quite this well. So it was a little bit disappointing to not get the manager, but certainly I understand why they would pick the first place team despite the fact that they had all the money in the world. But anyway, let's move on. There's nothing we can do about that. I did get a Manager of the Month award for the last month of the season, so we'll we'll take that. And then I, I thought we'd take a quick look now at, uh, let's go back actually to those stats real quick, because there's some kind of interesting things there if we look at that. If we go to Skybet League 1, a couple of things, and I'm curious to think about what this might mean for next year because we had the best possession in the league 58 percent Burton Albion was second to 56 percent so that's good and we also had the highest passing ratio I think it was where is that uh, passes completed ratio 83 percent Charlton we both had that so good possession based football I thought we had and and uh, that was good and and so that's kind of I'm wondering how that's going to transfer to next year but those are the places where we really kind of seem to shine pretty well and in, in terms of individual players not too much of note. Uh, goalkeeping, uh, goal scoring though, Zan Seller, our striker in the offseason that we picked up, had 15 league goals, ended up being tied for fifth place. So he had, came on strong in the beginning, faded in the middle, and then came on stronger again at the end. So it's nice to see him there. Then Shane Flynn, our left winger, who I'm trying to sign, he was on loan from Leicester. And they've cut him free. He wants a little bit too much money. But as we're on June 3rd right now, once we get to about June 10th, when the uh, negotiations can open up again and everyone's kind of the free agent negotiations open up, we're going to try to get him a little bit more uh, transfer window opens. We're going to try to uh, get him a little bit more aggressively to see if his wage demands drop. And then down in 20th position, George Lapsley uh, had 10 goals too, which was he was one of our midfielders, again, kind of filling in there. So some some interesting kind of stats there in terms of uh, players. If we look at uh, player ratings... I think also we did pretty well with a number of players. Where is this right here? Player rating. Da, 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 dribbles. We don't want that. Average rating. Here we go. Sorry for the delay. Uh, so Tom Holmes was fourth in the league. Nyak Kirby, our star center midfielder, was seventh. And then Zan Seller was 11th. Uh, 15th was Lapsley. And 18th was Andrew Robinson, who's just got no business being that good. So overall, I thought we did pretty well. And if we look at kind of our team average ratings... Uh, we're doing. We had a, a, a lot of players over seven, and the good thing is that most of these players, if not all of them, should be able to bring back for next year. So I think we're in pretty good shape for keeping the top half of our team. Which the general strategy that I want to take is: let's see if we can let go of the bottom half and keep the top half and then replace the bottom half with better players. I don't know how that's going to work. We'll take a look at that in a couple of minutes. But uh, in terms of the overall kind of who's coming back, Holmes is coming back, signed, Potts is coming back. All And the, the lone players, Jeffs, we have an offer out on to keep him for next year as well. He did well as kind of our secondary striker. And then all of these players, uh, Stolikovic, we're probably not bringing back because we don't want him back but we could um caleb watts is coming back john Byrne, we probably won't be but for the ones that we want back in this top half of the team i'm feeling pretty good so that part of what's it going to look like moving forward looks pretty good however here is our challenge and i thought maybe just take a few minutes to take a look at what kind of things we might look at we did spend our 1.5 million on the upgrade to the youth facilities and to the facilities in general. Those will be done at the end of November. So that'll be a big leap. And we got something like 700,000 from the league or something like that for whatever. So that has put us back into the positive for cash balance, but only 166,000. So I, I can't, I'm kind of concerned about our finances because I think they're going to go red pretty soon as we get into next year. I did take, we had been given a wage budget of 60000 which is 150000 less than Sunderland, who had the lowest wage budget in the Championship League. I did move all of our $2.5 million that they're giving us for the transfer budget, except for kind of an incidental 400000 for odd transfer fees and agent fees and stuff like that. So I was able to increase our wage budget to 100000 which is 50% lower than the next lowest team in the championship league we're spending about 40 we've got about 40,000 of that allotted for next year so that leaves us about 60,000 in signing now I was looking at some of the players in some of these other teams and if we look at for example let's just go up to 
uh, Skybet League One, if we go up to the Championship League here, was kind of just looking at, and we go to stages, go to the league table, I was even just looking like it's Sunderland, and then we look at their players, and uh, we look at, maybe selection info, that might do it, uh, actually let's go to the full player status, if we look at value or something like that, so even if we look down here at some of these players that are in the middle, 2.7, like Jacob Brown, uh, 13,000 pounds per week is what they get. We have about 60,000 to spend, so we could get like five players at that level. And that seems about the right range, between 10 and 15,000 for a year's salary at the championship layer for a level for a solid player. So that leaves us with the big challenge, because I've counted, we need 12 players, I think, to do well next year at the championship league level. We need almost every position, strengthening at almost every position, except maybe the midfield and some places we don't have anybody, like right back and right wing. So we're really going to have to hit. So that, that kind of looking looking forward, the last part of this episode, we're going to have to hit the loan markets. I'm really going after the Premier League teams. Once it hits July 1st and they kind of set their loan status players for next year, going to hit those loan players really hard. Once we get to June 9th and the transfer window opens back up again, we're going to really go hard to try to sign players that are at the end of their contracts and see if we can pick up in some good value players there. So that's the plan. If we could get 12 players at an average of about 5,000 pounds per month, I'm thinking maybe we aim for kind of high, young League One players that have a high potential. Maybe we can play them along and play into it and see what we can do. And the, the overall goal, which seemed to happen last year here, if we look at the the table real quick. So if I go into this, let's go to home, the league table. I think this, I'm kind of more and more thinking that this media prediction right here might be helpful for us. Because what happened last year is we started out, I think as it just as the season ticked in, we were somewhere down in the 20s. And then we picked up all those loan players and then we picked up our signings. And over the course of June and July, by the time the season started, I think we were like seventh or eighth in media prediction. So we're able to improve the team a lot. And that more than anything, this dynamic media prediction that changes as you improve your team and you know acquire players and lose players seems to be a pretty good predictor, predictor of about where we could finish. I expect when we start out on July 1st, that's when it'll set for the new year. We're gonna be somewhere down in the 20s. And my goal is to get us somewhere up into the teens before the season started. Because I think if we can do that, the game is telling us we have enough quality to survive next season. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so that brings us, I think, pretty much that's it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to mention, what we're going to do. Thank you as well to everybody. There's been a ton of people posting in the comments for last after the last episode about tips, advice, and things to try for next season. If you think of anything else, I'm all ears. One of them was to look for kind of uh, five-star potential players that are scattered around that might be undervalued that we might be able to pick up. So I'm going to try that because one of the things I've noticed now as we get higher, like at the lower leagues, the National League North and National League South, you can go around and you can just, let me just kind of set a different backdrop because that's really, you can go around and you can look for trialists. You can just bring in all the trialists and chances are some of those trialists are going to be players you can use on your team. Likewise, the cast offs from the teams above you usually are going to be your best players down at like League 2 and stuff like that. If you can grab a Premier League cast off, they can be really good for your team. But as we're getting up to the Championship League, the trialists, just the random trialists don't seem to really provide much value. I mean, I'm taking a look at some of them, but there's it's not much out there and certainly not a player who's going to come in and step in and be a starter for you. Likewise, the cast-offs in the Premier League look like they're cast-off for a reason and they have fatal flaws and we're trying to avoid now fatal flaws because it seems like most of the good players are pretty solid all around at this level. So we need to kind of avoid those players that have like a one or a two of determination or a teamwork of like a three or something like that, that those could be just killer values, I think, at this level. So... The strategy, what I'm saying is the strategies that worked earlier on in this save don't seem like they're really working now. So I got to try to figure out some better ones. I really do like the loan strategy of July 1st going in and scouting every team in the league above you and then just hammering those loan players as they come available. That's how we got those three players last year for free. A left winger, right winger, and a right back who were just stars for us and they were all free. And that really turned our season, I think, for the positive. So that's the plan. So going forward, it's June 3rd now. I'm going to play forward up until July 1st when the season turns over. And then we're going to have 
Season 6, Episode 0, which is kind of a look at what we've been able to accomplish the last month and what we have to do and what kind of things might happen for the year going forward. So uh, I think that brings us to pretty much everything that I was hoping to talk about in, in this year. As always, thank you so much for your support. If you've liked the episode, please give it a like. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. We'll see you. I'm hoping to be back on Friday to get that month in between now and then, but I tend to micro this. So it took me a long time last time. So we'll see how things go, but I'm hopeful I can keep up to the same schedule as before and we'll drive right on and uh, and keep going here. So thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next episode.